Hi to all. I am Rampur Srinath, uh, working as associate professor in the Department of Information Science and Engineering, uh, the National Institute of Engineering, Mysore. The course that uh, I will be offering is uh, Python application programming. In that, we will be trying to understand the concept behind Python, then what are the programming constructs that are available. And maybe at the end of the session, we will be able to write a lot of programs, solve the real life applications using Python programming. Yeah. In the uh, Python uh, application programming, uh, we will be covering module 2, which talks about three things. One, iteration, strings and then the files. So, initially we will we'll be talking about iterations. So, when you look at the word iteration, what do we understand? Like, uh, we will say that uh, I want to follow some steps. So, can I take all the steps at a time or should I go by step by step? So, when I have a problem of a particular uh, statement to be solved, then the best option could be what? Go by step by step. And there are few situations where we want to combine all of them together and run uh, in a different way. But initially, we will we'll be taking it a simpler like go step by step, try to look for how do we achieve all that. So, where our, our topic of our discussion will be something called as iteration. Now, uh, normally uh, before we jump on to iteration, we will try to understand something about a variable, then look at how that is used in the performance of the iteration. So, when you look at a common uh, assignment uh, statement, like what we have as an example here, index equal to index plus 1. So, where the variable that we are looking as index, so this statement, the index equal to index plus 1, what it does, right. So, as we have an understanding like what we have after equal will be evaluated first, whatever may be our index value, like example, if index happens to be 4, we add 1 to that, we have performed the necessary operation and then store it back to a another variable. So, here this happens to be an assignment statement where we have index equal to index plus 1. Now, what if we, we are trying to do something different? Like example, if we want to update a variable that does not exist, right. For example, we have x equal to x plus 1. Now, what is the meaning of a variable that does not exist? The meaning here is in a any programming language, the most important is I declare a variable, I specifically tell that okay, this is the variable that I am using. Example, index is a variable. So, then I tell that I am using a variable called index where I am telling specifically that index is a variable. In case, if I do not specify index as a variable, example, here we have x. So, now in a particular program, I have not told what is x. I have not expressed that x is a variable, x is I have not defined, but I still try to use x in my program. So, what will happen? Given an expression x equal to x plus 1, x equal to x plus 1. So, according to our understanding is what? Okay, whatever may be our initial value of x, for example, it happens to be 5 plus 1, which we sum up and get 6 as our result and we expect 6 to be stored in x. So, what we did? x initial value is 5, we add 1 to that, it becomes 6, then we add, we take that sum 6 and store that in a variable x. But what is the problem that we have done here? We never told what is x. So, what happens? Immediately a translator, it could be a, a compiler or an interpreter, it has to tell us like look, you have not told what is x. So, there are many programming languages for which we need not define anything which works out. But in Python, we, we have to define that what is x. So, the problem here is what? We have given an appropriate assignment statement, but we never told what is x, what is this variable, we have not defined it. So, hence we get an error. So, very important is what? When we look at something like iteration or anything like writing a program, the most important thing is look at what variables are required for the problem solving. Then define all those variables which we want to use in the program. So, what if I do not define? Simple, anything that is not understood by a translator, it throws an error. So, our program we cannot execute. So, going back again, we have to look at what is that error, correct that appropriately and go further. So, 
a small like okay how do how do i de, uh, define a variable that we have taken in the previous module module 1 where we have discussed about uh, the uh, declaration of variable how to do that in the python all that going further what are we doing here we are trying to assign a value to a variable update that variable so updating a variable is an example of this and once if it is a variable is not defined then we get an error for which this is an example where the error that we are trying to get is something called as a name error and in python or any programming language one very good advantage that we have is whenever we get an error it is not only the error name it will also give us some details about that error so that it becomes easy for a programmer to correct it example if i have x equal to x plus 1 and where x i have not defined then it throws me an error called name error but it also gives me an information like name x is not defined so in that case i come to know that as a programmer that okay there is some problem in x and it's also telling that it is not defined so i can go back to my program look for have i defined x if yes appropriate then why this error is coming up this error has come only because i have not defined x so here just to know about how am i initializing a variable and how am i updating a, a variable what is the assignment statement what if something goes wrong like example not defining a particular variable so before a variable is being used in the program it is most important that we always define that variable now we will slightly look at something about re repeated steps and then get on to what exactly is our iteration because our whole of the topic is about iteration so now in this example if you look at we have a flow chart which will give us a clear picture like wh uh, what step we are going about now here we are we have something called as n as a variable with initial value 5 so we are taking let the value of n be 5 then go further do a particular step and then keep incrementing or decrement the value of the variable now if you look at the whole of this flow chart we understand n equal to 5 then we are trying to check is n greater than 0 is n greater than 0 if yes then what are we doing we are printing the value of n so i have 5 here 5 greater than 0 the initial value is 5 greater than 0 which happens to be true then i print the value of n which is 5 then what i do i decrement the value of n by 1 so n is 5 5 minus 1 is 4 which gets stored in n so now the value of n is 4 go back again onto the condition now the n is 4 4 greater than 0 yes print the value that is n is 4 then again decrement n by 1 which becomes 3 in our case go back again we check 3 is greater than 0 if yes print the value of n in our case it is 3 then decrement the value of n by 1 it becomes 2 and so on till n is equal to 0 once if at the end of this i get n equal to 1 it will go back again 1 greater than 0 yes print the value of n to be 1 then again i decrement n by minus 1 so this becomes 0 so now what i am carrying here is 0 which goes 0 greater than 0 which is false so hence we come back to no and come out saying that print the end statement now when you look at the loop that we have here so i took n equal to 5 then this what i am trying to do here is a loop is a loop where i have a termination statement called n greater than 0 so once this condition is true i want to be inside this loop i want to repeat these statements i want to repeat these statements if not then i want to come out of it now here very important for us is iteration variable now what is this iteration variable so here we have a variable in this loop which is trying to change each time when i go through the loop such that after some point of time i am coming out of the loop for which we call that as an iteration variable so the repeated steps have iteration variables that change each time through a loop so in this if you look at which is our iteration variable a variable which keeps changing whenever we try to repeat inside a loop so if you look at n is a variable that we are interested in that we are interested in which is our iteration variable now so here 
normally if you take an iteration variable they go by sequencing they go by sequencing normally it is not necessary that it should be always sequencing but normally it goes through a sequencing. So, in this example which is our iteration variable fine now we have a variable in this program where my variable is n constant is 5 and I do not have any other variable in my program but how do I define that n is a variable which is an iterative variable. So, now in a, 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 a variable which is iterative in nature is the one which keeps either updating changing in each iteration so that at some point of stage we can come out of the loop we can come out of this structure. So, in our example if you go run this as assuming that uh, we have this code a small part of the while loop then when I run this while loop what will be my values right. So, when you go with this while loop the initial value of n is 5 then we look for a condition n greater than 0 where n value is 5. So, 5 greater than 0 yes print n n is nothing but 5. So, we get the output n as 5 then we decrement n equal to n minus 1. So, wherein we get n value as 4. Now, when you look at the syntax of this print f print n n equal to n minus 1 these two statements are under while. Now, this is the format of a while loop in python where what is our condition? Our condition is something like the statement condition colon and the list of statements. So, now if you look at this is our statement while n greater than 0 colon then print n n equal to n minus 1. So, these two are the statements under the while loop. Now, going back our initial value of n is 5. So, 5 greater than 0 print n which we got 5 as our output then we decrement n by 1 where n becomes 4 go back to the while loop 4 greater than 0 true then print n we get the value of n again then we decrement the value of n by 1 where we get 3 3 greater than 0 appropriate print 3 then again decrement n by 1 which becomes 2 while loop 2 greater than 0 true print n which is nothing but 2 again going back 2 minus 1 which is 1. So, n becomes 1 going back to while loop 1 greater than 0 is still appropriate true we get output as 1 n 1 minus 1 which happens to be 0 in our case. So, once it is 0 look at the while loop 0 greater than 0 which happens to be false. So, once it is false the while loop statements which we have we come out of it that is what we have here n 0 greater than 0 false. So, in that case it comes back it the control comes out of the while loop. So, we will print blast off yeah we got printed that and finally after that we are trying to print the value of n just to check what exactly was our value of n. So, where we have print n the value is 0. So, when you look at this concept we have a while loop where we are trying to check use one iterative variable where that iterative variable will always keep changing inside the loop. So, in this example we have n which is an iterative variable which keeps on changing. So, changes each time through a loop a variable which does this kind of activity we call that variable as an iterative variable. Right? So, now this is an iterative variable where an example is for a while loop. So, we will go further try to do some modification in this and try to understand still more detail about that. Now, so when we call each time what is that we are trying to call here right. So, we have a while my condition and my list of statements here then I have another list of statements here. So, when you look at the syntax so here if we have a while a condition to be made where this condition can be either true or false or we can tell as yes and no if yes what happens all the statements of this are executed if no control will come out we will execute here if it is no or if it is false if yes all these statements get executed. Now, so what is the meaning of when we call? So, it is nothing but condition trying to condi check the condition go back here execute this again go back check the condition. So, if it is still true this will happen many number of times keeps going like this 
till it becomes false. Once the condition becomes false, the control will come out here. So now, as the condition is true, we are doing lot of things, right? One among that is this one iteration. So when we execute each time, what are we doing? Simple. We are executing the body, and that body of the loop with what one iteration. So here there are two things to understand. One iteration second iteration variable one will go back and look for what is iteration variable yeah an iteration variable is the one which is there whenever we try to execute that there is a change in that variable there is a change in that variable and that change variable we call it as an iteration variable now second point first is iteration variable second one what is iteration then right so every time you call a, a, a loop is executed so each time each time a loop is executed we that loop is what the body section so that body of the loop is executed we call that as an iteration so if i tell that uh, okay my code has 10 iterations then what is the meaning of 10 iterations then the meaning is i have a loop i have a loop this loop is executing 10 times this loop is executing 10 times so i tell that okay number of iteration that has run is 10 so if i run all statements one in one time inside a loop then i call that i have occurred one iteration i have completed one iteration so if i am running this for x number of times then i tell i have completed my x iterations i have completed my x iterations so there are two things which we need to be very clear one iteration variable second what is the meaning of iteration now so now what we have done is we still have an iteration but small change in the looping small change like what we do a small change will make us a lot of difference for us so a small mistake can bring us to problems now when you look at this loop we have iterative variable okay we'll get into that we have one variable with n equal to 5 where we are initializing the value of n to be 5 good next we are trying to put a condition 5 greater than 0 that is also very much appropriate so we have condition 5 greater than 0 it is true so hence the statements are executed so we will print the statements what next we will go back again again check n greater than 0 yeah definitely true because n is still 5 so this statement is always true for us now where is our iteration variable we just now told that okay our iteration variable is the one inside the loop we do a small change to that but what is our variable variable is n where we are not doing any changes to that so here n is not an iteration variable here so now the mistake what we have done here we wrote a condition we initialized a variable we have a condition also but we never thought of what should be what we should do with that variable inside the loop so our objective should always be what one we want an infinite loop we'll take some action here so we need not worry about that but we we do not take an action here based on the variable we are trying to figure out whether i will be continuing the loop or i want to come out of the loop whether I want to execute the statements under loop or I do not want. In that case, we should be very careful that in the looping structure, we will access a variable either do an increment or do an decrement and make sure that either we increment or decrement. I will repeat again, make sure that either we increment or decrement, we have to make sure that this approaches the condition what approaches the condition the either the increment or decrement where do we write that inside the while loop now an example for this is taking the same example we understood that it is an infinite loop why infinite in nature we took n equal to 5 5 is always greater than 0 but in the while loop we are not modifying anything with n so hence n is always 5 this is always true hence we are always printing these two statements so the control will never come out of the while loop which we told that it is an infinite loop we will do a small modification to that so now i knew that n is greater than 0 i want to do some modification here either it can be an increment or it can be a decrement so what we will do 
we will write here one more statement called n equal to n plus 1, n plus 1. So, we are trying to add 1 every time inside the loop. So, now n is 5, 5 plus 1 6, go back, 6 greater than 0, yes, go back, go back and so on. So, actually what we wanted, we wanted n equal to n minus 1, not n plus 1. So, we should be very careful what we told when we write a condition of this either an increment or a decrement we should make sure that it approaches this. So, now what are we doing we are n equal to 5. So, I want to make sure that I approach n to be 0 so that at some point of stage this condition becomes false I will come out of the while loop. Now, how to make it? So, normally when we have something condition like n greater than 0 then we bring this towards 0. So, if I want to bring that then it should be a decrement operator. So, we will make sure while we write this logic like whether to use an increment operator or a decrement operator based on the code that we are trying to problem out. Right? So, what is wrong in this loop? Loops looks perfect, but we should be very careful it is an infinite loop. So, when I have a program of infinite loop we never get terminate. So, this particular statement along with all the statements will never be executed. Reason? the control is always inside the loop. So, we have to terminate that abnormally where our program will not execute all this statement. So, we should be very careful what is wrong with this loop it is an infinite loop. Coming down to our flow chart same code we have a flow chart where we have n equal to 5 check for condition if true do this if not come out. But when you look at this condition n equal to 5 condition is done always it is true. So, this statement gets executed it will keep revolving over this loop. So, number of iterations there is no end for this. So, hence we should be very careful at some point of stage we have to come out of this loop go further it will be our normal programming. So, we should be careful that we do not end up in the infinite loop. Now, how to identify that there is something wrong if there is no iteration variable inside this no iteration variable inside this loop then we have landed in problem. So, we should be very careful step number 1 there should be a iteration variable inside the loop. Step number 2 that iteration variable changes what we are doing either an increment or a decrement make sure that we, we are approaching the condition point. So, that at some point of stage we come out of the while loop and our normal execution goes further. We have another loop here we have another loop here like what could be the problem with this loop right. So, we have n equal to 0 what was our earlier example n equal to 5 our earlier example was n equal to 5 here we have n equal to 0 while n greater than 0 again we are trying to check run this and if this happens to be true yes do that if this is false do it. So, I will write here t for true f for false ok. Now, n equal to 0 what is my condition? 0 greater than 0 right. So, here we all know that 0 greater than 0 is false hence we are trying to or my code will execute this statement. Now, in that case what is the use of writing this statements these two statements because they never execute why they why the, uh, the statements under while loop are not executed reason this condition is not appropriate my condition says that n equal to 0 and condition is telling 0 greater than 0 which never happens it is always false hence only this statement is executed. At any point of stage you run 100 times still only this statement is executed. So, these two statements are never executed. So, in that case we can come to know that ok there is something wrong that I have done here Maybe one modification initial value of n is wrong or maybe the condition that I have applied may be wrong. So, I have to cross check these two and look for appropriate change the value of n in the loop. So, once I do that n becomes my iteration variable because that is what I am doing a small change in the looping structure. So, when you try to use a iterative variable so you should be very careful look for the initial value ok that happens to be our uh, conditional statement, but inside the loop every time I execute a statement the variable which there will be some change some change in the variable and this variable happens to be an iterative variable and these two statement I run once I call that one iteration. 
So, what is wrong with this loop? Yeah, we know that this true part will never execute. What was wrong in our previous uh, statement? Because these two were executed, the other part was not executed because it was an infinite loop. So, we should be very careful while we use an iterative variable. Now, there are many situations like what? Okay, uh, we do not know the condition. So, I will I'll add one statement here. So, I will write while condition, then I have list of statements here and these are the statements which are to be executed after the while loop. Now, there are many instances where I do not know what is the condition that I want to apply. Now, in that case, if I do not know condition, then I cannot go further, but I want to execute these statements without knowing condition. So, what we can do? We know that when are these statements executed provided this condition is true, provided this condition is true. Now, how do I make that as true? I can put a condition while true always to run this loop. So, now what I am doing here? My condition is always true. If my condition is always true, then I am making it as an infinite loop. Just now we told that we should not make an infinite loop. Assuming that we cannot solve a problem for a particular statement where I cannot make that using an infinite loop, but you are supposed to do that. So, what we can do? We can make this as always true, run the statement, we land up in problem because we cannot come out. Now, what is our objective? We want this to be true always, but from this I want to come out, come out of the loop for which we do have an option where we call this as what? A break. So, we want the number of statements to be executed and some point of stage we want to break and bring the control outside the loop for which we have a concept called as breaking through. So, we look into it what is breaking through. Just now we understood something about a break right. So, here what is our condition? While true we want to execute set of statements. So, but at some point of stage we want to come out of that loop for which we have an option. Now, that option is nothing but breaking out of the loop for which in python we have a keyword called break. So, now here the break statement ends the current loop, ends the current loop and jumps immediately following the loop, immediately following the loop. Now, there are many instances where we have lot of uh, uh, what do you tell problems like what? We do not know the condition, but still we want to execute n number of times that n is not known to us. So, based on that we want to figure out how can I run those variables, how can I run those statements n number of times and come out of it. right? So, if I knew that I am going to run n number of times, yeah in that case I know what is n, I can come out. But if I do not know based on some condition I want to come out, the only option that is available is break. Now, how to use break? Right? So, we will we'll take the same example of while loop and get into it. Right? So, now we told while true, uh, look at this condition here. So, now till now we took something like n greater than 0 or n greater than 5, some conditions where we had option either it could be true or it could be false. So, all our conditions were of where my return type will be either true or false. So, we had a very good uh, easy programming, but now look at this condition here. This condition will always tell us it is true, always it is true. So, now we have a problem like what? When I make my condition as always true, I land up in something called as what? Infinite loop, infinite loop. So, if it is infinite, then I cannot come out of it. So, if I cannot come out of the while loop, my program is stuck and I am not able to continue. So, now to come out of that in these situations, we have a beautiful keyword called break which will help us to do the things. Now, so first we will understand what is the problem statement then get into the while loop. Now, here what am I doing? I have, I am trying to read data, I am trying to read data from where? From the keyboard. I will read data from the keyboard, next I will display the content onto the screen. So, simple read write. So, what I am doing? 
I am reading data and I am writing data. Reading from where? Reading from a keyboard, writing to where? Onto the display screen which is nothing but our monitor. Now, here after reading I am writing onto screen. So, example I will read hello there, hello there, I will read from a keyboard, I will display hello there. I will read finished, I will display finished. I will read next time, I will say can, I will read it and what will I display? Can. I will read anywhere, what will I display? Anywhere. Now, when to come out of this? When do I want to stop this loop? When do I want? I do not want to read anything, I do not want to sub, uh, display anything on the screen. For which? I will decide, okay. I will write uh, maybe some word based on that word, I want to stop. Now, example that we have taken is done. So, now what am I telling here? I will tell, okay, user, you write what are the statement that you want, you give. So, I will print, I will type hello there, press enter key. So, that becomes an input for my program, I display that. So, I keep doing this continuously till where? Till user queues done till user types done. So, now what is my concept here? My concept slightly modified, slightly changed. What I am doing here is read the data, write it on the screen, read data, write on the screen, keep doing everything till we encounter a word called done. So, once I encounter a word called done, then I want to stop. I do not want to read or I do not want to write continue. I want to come out. So, now Look at the program that I have while true which is nothing but always true then I am trying to read input raw underscore input is nothing but a function in python which will help me to read data. So, I read data from a keyboard drop it onto line. So, I am copying whatever I have read from the keyboard into a variable line. Then I check if line equal to done if line. So, in that case I am trying to check whether the user has entered a word done. If yes, then I want to stop, I tell break. So, when I execute break, what happens? My control will come out of the while loop. So, all these statements, all these statements under while loop. So, now once I encounter break, I come out of the while loop, I start executing continuously here. Now, if it is not done, so line entered example, hello there. So, it will check hello there is equal to done, no this statement is not executed, print line. What is line? Line is nothing but the data that I have read which is a hello world. So, now when you look at this loop, so what are we doing here? Condition part is not known, so I made it true, but inside the loop I want to come out of it for which the option that is available is break. So, now what if break is not there? So, 100 percent sure that the statement will always be executing this while statements, all the statements under while continuously without any break. So, our control will never come out of which, which is nothing but an infinite loop. We made infinite, but still we are able to come out of which using a keyword called break. So, now when to use break? Now, break can be used with finite loop, break can be used with infinite loop, anything. But what is important here? On based on some condition, but not with while, not with while. Inside the while loop, based on some condition, I want to come out of the while loop. I can use break. If it is finite, hundred percent sure. At some point of stage, control will come out. If it is finite, can I use break? There are a lot of uh, confusions or maybe uh, a, a myth saying that okay, if this is a finite loop, we should not use break. No, nothing. If it is finite loop or infinite loop, it does not matter, we want a break, definitely we can use that. So, now a hint point is what? 1. If it is finite loop, maybe not required, fine, adjusted. If it is infinite loop, definitely we need to have a break. So, we need to look for based on the condition I want to come out of the loop, 1. Second, based on the condition also inside the while loop I want some condition where I want to come out. I do not want to execute all the lines further. In that case I need to go with break. So, now our requirement is something like I want to run n number of times and in n after some condition I want to come out without executing further, without going further with the loop. So, for which we have a break statement. So, one of the statement which helps us 
to end the current while loop come out is nothing but our break statement. So, end the current loop, end the current loop, stop executing the looping structure, come out of the looping structure is nothing but our break statement. Now, uh, maybe uh, concentrating on that break statement like what happens if that line is executed, what happens if a break is executed. So, simple once we encounter break control comes out. So, if you look at you have lot of conditions here. So, here we check something on this if yes break then we come out of if not keep continuing right. So, this is an infinite loop in the infinite loop we add one more statement called break make sure that it comes out of the while loop. So, now we have two conditions one I can come out of this while loop using this first one second one I can come out of the while loop using break second. Now, in our example we have a problem what is that problem one is never possible why because the condition is true. But I told that okay, we have one, we have two here, but I am telling now one is not possible. Now, one is not possible only because of this true. But how do I make this as a finite loop? I can write in our previous example n greater than 5, where initial value of n equal to 0. So, simple, it is a finite loop two ways. One, based on the condition, if true, I get into this, break, I come out of this. Second, if n is 5 because we keep incrementing right or we may, may be decrementing based on the condition it becomes false I come out of here. So, in that case I have two options 1 and 2. So, simple when to use break when we are inside a loop at some point of stage we want to come out of the loop we can use a break keyword. So, this break helps us to stop the while loop come take the control outside the while loop. So, there are a lot of instances where we will be using break. So, when you look at this what we have understood one like uh, uh, iterative variable what is the meaning of iteration and uh, a small example of our while loop where we understood like how do we increment or decrement the iterative variable followed by what is an iteration then inside the while loop we looked at what small small mistakes that we can do where we land up in problem like infinite loop and loop where uh, true part is not executed at all and something like in the infinite loop we want to make sure that we come out of it. So, how to come out? Yeah, the best option that we have is break use a keyword break. So, in our previous session we understood if there is any for loop or if statement or any of that we have a format like while condition with colon then list of statements here the other list of statements here. So, if you look at if statement also same if condition colon and we have a break. So, look at this print it starts here. So, in that case this is true part and this is outside the if statement. So, this is the format that we have discussed in the previous module. So, this module what we are trying to look at what keywords can be used how to make it more effective what is iteration and rest of the things. Break here. Sir, class end. Class end. E session. So, with this break keyword we end the session here, thank you.